Hi everyone, nice to see you. I'm Hannah from Leaf Creative Arts. Today I'm going to show you how I'm decorating this pumpkin um, by painting it rather than carving it because carving is difficult and it's messy. Um, so I've got this pumpkin which I've painted half of with a coat of white paint just to prime it and the other half I've left as it was so that we've got options. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different designs based on whether it was painted on one side or not. And in the same video, I'm also going to be showing you how I made this little stone look like a sugar skull. Um, you know, the kind of sugar skull that they have in Mexico around the Day of the Dead. So we're going to use both those two techniques today. And I know that some of you have already been decorating pumpkins in one of our groups. Uh, we recently got back up and running with our in-person groups so we do memory cafes, an art for wellbeing group and a good vibrations music group. So those of you who come to those groups are already well ahead of me on the pumpkin steaks. So I'm going to use today to catch up. So I'll talk you through the materials that I've got here. Um, I have my pumpkin, which you've already seen. I've got a plain old flat stone, which I painted white before I started. I've got a box of acrylic paints. Um, I think I got these from WH Smiths. They were not especially expensive. And some extra white because we'll need that. Um, I have water to wash my brushes and the brushes themselves. Um, no specific size of brush that you need, so I've got uh, a selection. I've got this plastic tub that I'm going to be mixing my paints in. You don't need a fancy artist palette, um, any old Tupperware that you've got lying around will do. Um, I do have some Posca pens, which are really, really nice for drawing and painting onto things. They are quite easy to get hold of. You can get them from Smith's or from Cass Art or other art shops, or you can buy them online. Um, but they're not cheap, I don't think. So I've also got some regular uh, felt tip pens, which are not expensive. And I've already tested those on my stone and found that they work perfectly well so you can use whatever you've got available to you and, and I might mix and match a little bit. Um, I've got a plain black marker pen or again you could use a black felt tip. You can't see but underneath my working space I have put some paper down because I don't want to get acrylic paint all over my table um, so if you hear rustling sounds that's what that is. So as you might have been able to tell when I held it up, this pumpkin is sort of still drying. Acrylic paint normally dries very quickly, especially if you get a hairdryer onto it. But I've noticed that the, the paint on the pumpkin is drying a little bit slower than the paint on the stone did. I guess that's because the stone is more porous. So it's going to need a little longer and I'll make a start on my sugar skull. So I did cheat a little bit by beginning before I came on camera, just drawing a pencil outline. The reason I made the start is because the, the reference photo I was using is on my phone and I'm filming on my phone so I couldn't do both at the same time. I'll see if I can show you like this. Uh, I'm going to just draw around the outline. And I'll draw some extra embellishments on this as I go. I am about to go off camera so I can get at this better. I will see you shortly. Okay, so I actually managed to work quite quickly there. Um, you can see that it's a fairly typical sugar skull design using flowers and hearts and swirls down the bottom. And I've tested out the felt tip just to make sure that it works and it does. So I don't think we'll necessarily need to use the Posca pens. Um, but we'll go a bit colourful today. Um, I tend to be really mean at Halloween. If there are trick-or-treaters coming around, I tend to hide and pretend I'm not in. It's not that I object to giving away sweets. Um, it's just that when it's October and it's dark outside and maybe I've come home from work or whatever, I um, don't really want to have to interact with anyone, you know? They come unexpectedly knocking at my door. That's very miserable of me, isn't it? 
So what do you like to do around Halloween? Do you have children in your family that like to dress up? Or do you dress up yourself? A few years ago, I went to a fancy dress party as Velma from Scooby-Doo. So she was the one with, um, with short hair and glasses. And I got some, some cheap black glasses, black framed plastic glasses from eBay. And I took the lenses out, even though they weren't prescription lenses, of course. They were, they were just clear glass, um, or clear plastic rather, but I thought it would be funnier to take the lenses out. Uh, with the eyes here, I'm sort of drawing circles within the circles, can you see? It just adds a bit more interest to the design. Uh, and I'm going to keep similar colours throughout the design. So as I've used purple around the eyes, I've also used purple for these swirls down here. And I've used blue on the eyes, so now I'm taking the blue up to the top. And that sort of balances out the design. Balances out the colours, if you see what I mean. But I do want to use a range of colours. Um, you could keep it kind of uh, monochrome, you could make it just black and white. Or you could pick just one or two colours, like I could have used just blue and purple throughout the design, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a few different colours. Oh I can see that the orange here is sort of smudging in with the black. Maybe if I left the black for longer to dry then that wouldn't happen. I don't really mind though. It doesn't matter too much. There we go. So now that you can see how this is progressing, I'm going to put that to one side and I will come back later on camera when it's completely finished and show you the complete design. So let's go over to my pumpkin now, which is a bit drier than it was before. Um, you can see that uh, the paper's taken off some of the paint where, where it was sat on the paper to dry, but that's okay. I can paint over it later. Um, so on one side, I'm just going to go with some brightly coloured stripes. Here I've mixed um, a colour called cerulean, also known as blue, with a bit of white. And I'm going to use the natural stripes of the pumpkin. To paint stripes on like so. which is certainly harder to do when I'm holding it up like this so that you can see on the camera. But I know that you will appreciate seeing this little demonstration. It is quite straightforward, the design that I'm doing, because as I say, I'm just following the natural lines of the pumpkin. And some of the stripes are bigger than others. I'm not going to attempt to make them uniform. I'll just go with them the way that they are. And just accept the way that Mother Nature designed this particular pumpkin. You can see that I'm not being especially precise. And so this will just be alternate lines like this. So we'll have a stripy side to this pumpkin. And now on the other side, I've gone for a bit more of a traditional Halloween design. 
and you could um, use pencil to mark out your design but I've gone straight back in, straight in with black marker pen because I, I found it easy enough um, to just draw with the, the black pen and it does mean that you can see it clearly. So I've used this bat outline like a bat silhouette which I found on the internet and the way that you do this sort of scalloped edge to the wing there is quite similar to the way that you would draw a holly leaf. So if you ever happen to draw a holly leaf you're quite familiar with that, that scallop effect already. And it's possible to uh, to smudge the lines when you're using a marker pen like that but that can work to your advantage if you get it a bit wrong and you just want to rub it out. So what am I going to do with this? I am going to colour the bat in black, which is traditional. Of course you could have any kind of technical bat you wanted. And I'm going to add uh, a sort of spot design down, um, down the stripes, down the spokes as it were. Um, but I will show you that later. So I'm going to go off camera once again to complete these three designs really, because it's two sides of a pumpkin and one stone and I will be back shortly to show you what I've done. See you later. Okay so I'm ready to reveal my Halloween designs. I've done them a bit quickly because I was eager to show you but I'm very pleased with the sugar skull. Um, you can see that it's basically a symmetrical design although it's not completely symmetrical because the stone itself isn't. I'm pretty satisfied with that and it was very satisfying to do, it was really enjoyable um, and very simple so I drew the design on in pencil then I went over it in black marker and I filled it in with um, felt tips and then for the pumpkin on one half I've done this uh, traditional Halloween design with these bats and just a a spotty effect down the, um, the spokes of the pumpkin and then on the other side I've done more of a candy stripe effect uh, or you know what else it reminds me of? It reminds me of a sea urchin so I used to have a sea urchin shell that I got one time in Cornwall you might have seen some like it so there we go three quite different concepts but all very simple to do with no messy carving involved. Um, you can be quite versatile with your Halloween designs, they don't all have to be spooky but they can be if you want them to be. So do let us know in the comments or in our WhatsApp group if you're part of that how you get on with your own designs. We'd love to see your photos if you have them and we'll see you next time. Bye!